It was the biggest event in Australia. It was the best track in the Southern Hemisphere. It was always known as a huge event, a great event, and the pinnacle. There was nothing better than Manjimup. Well, the Manjimup 15,000 started in 1980 whereas a bunch of locals said, we'll put up $15,000 prize money and get all the big guys, some guys from around the world, the Eastern States, come and have a great big event in Manjimup, 300 kilometers south of Perth. About 2004, the club ran into difficulties and then it stopped. 2006, seven and eight, it was not on. It was in, like there wasn't a problem. The, the problem was they had a lack of lack of committee members and it, and it was a, it was in a stage, it was 2009 when we did our first 15,000, is that that every club in Australia, or in, well, particularly Western Australia, we were all struggling for volunteers so they didn't have enough committee members, they didn't have enough high level um, officials to run the event and they didn't have enough experience because all the people who had been running it previously had retired or moved out of the town. And then in 2008, I approached the club to say, can I have a crack at running your 15,000? I had this meeting with Jeff Leask one day and he asked me what my goal was. And I said, I want to have the biggest and best race in Australia. Todd, Willie Thompson, give me a call, thank you. Well, we need to have good riders for the All-Stars race to attract the, the spectators. So if we don't have big riders, it's a bit of a problem. The spectator admission fee for spectators pays the bills. We've already had like $200,000 outstanding by the time it starts on Friday morning. Well, we're trying to secure Ryan Villapoto, so we're in negotiations and we're just waiting to hear back from him. So I'm trying to hurry it along. So well, we've, we've, off, we've thrown some money at him and there was not a, a, a no answer. So we're just waiting to hear if he's keen to come. So he is available for the Manjum Up weekend. Uh, just as long as he doesn't get a better offer. So I'm just going to give Ryan Dungey a call and see if he's interested. I have been communicating with him, but I haven't heard back. I feel nervous about calling him. <laughs> But uh, I did hear that he's back training and he wants to go back racing. So he'll have a programme somewhere. But if it's not in the outdoors AMA, then he might be looking to do one-off events. And even on a bad day, he would go well. He's back in Minnesota, so that'll be 10... So that'll be 9 o'clock at night. Oh, it's a bit late to be phoning Ryan Dungey. It's not going to stop me, though. has been forwarded to an automated voice messaging system. Okay, so that's nine o'clock at night in Minnesota, so that might be a little bit late for him to be getting a phone call, wife and kids and all, so, but maybe not. I've been doing these phone calls for years. You just learn to roll with it. And sometimes the ones you think I'll never get are the ones you do get. And the ones you are secured fall apart. So obviously, you know, we've lost Luke Clout, broken leg, Webster, broken ankle, and like they're the two main chargers for Manjimup, and they're both gone, so. Well, Chad Reed was on the cards, but Chad said he's not interested in coming this year because of COVID, but he'd be interested possibly next year. Townley is involved with Yamaha, and Yamaha are testing a new bike in Spain. So he's out. Jace McAlpine. Jace? Not bad, and yourself? So he just texts you, well I just rang him, he didn't answer. I was texting him yesterday, but um, okay, that's a bugger, Dungey's out. So is Villapoto in or out, you think? Yeah. Oh, right. Cool. Cole Sealy's a good name. 
All right. Well, look, you have a wee think about that. Reach out, reach out to Cole Seeley, and um, we'll push on from there. That was not a good conversation. So Dungey just text Gypsy Tales and say these messages had a baby, he'll give it a miss. Villa Poto is not keen now. So we went to the next stage saying, well, money's a problem if we didn't offer them enough money. So, but you never know with these guys because when they say they're not keen, it's not, I'm not coming. It's just, maybe they want more money. Hmm. So, nah, that's a pity. So we'll still pin our hopes on Villa Poto. But uh, yeah, it's starting to get thin. He was keen. Um, Gotta love that. Why would you not love that view? This is what dreams are made of. So the motocross event and the long weekend in June is the biggest event that Manjimup has. There's a couple of things like the Cherry Festival and there's a mountain bike race and that. And they're starting to get very big, but this financially brings the most money to town. We would imagine, in our, in our heyday, we would have, we would max out at 640 riders. We, um, we, wouldn't, we couldn't get any more in. We would have like 1,500 people looking for accommodation. The district only has enough beds for 1,000. So realistically, it, it provides a huge challenge because everyone wants a bit of accommodation. So in the beginning, we started camping at the track for the riders and the support crews because there's only 1,000 beds in Manjimup Shire up for rent and there's just, you know, we've got far too many, we've got 5,000 people rocking up to this event. So that's when, you know, we accommodate for, say, probably a 1,000 people here for the, um, the camping. And the, the town takes care of a lot of people. There's overflow camping in town. There's also caravan parks and camping facilities in town, and they, they're at capacity. So it, goes, it starts in this area here and it goes right up over the hill. They call that rock and roll hill. So right over the top is where the camping area is. Lots of, lots of area for lots of people. The nighttime atmosphere at the 15,000, it's, it's like a, no other. There's, it's a big happy family. But at nighttime, when we have ramps like this here, this will be where all the bikes are going to go down there. They'll build a jump at the bottom and there'll be 200 people around, mums and dads, kids, music, cheering, and it's, um, it's pretty special to see. You see it and you just think, these people are having a great time. So it's not just the motorbike race, it's the event. We put on an event for people to come and enjoy the whole package. So, so when you a... replied, you need to reply all, so then that way I get it too, so I know what you're talking about. Because otherwise you just reply to her and mm. then I don't know what you've said. Right, I never reply all. I don't know how to. I think it gives you an, <laughs> I think it gives you an option. I don't know. <laughs> um, oh, I need to take this call. I've only been ringing them all day long. Go on then. Sorry.
uh, so it doesn't matter what we throw at them, they're not going to come because they've not got the gear. No, oh, that really sucks. Um, so what happened to um, Zach Osborne? Is he not an option nah, anymore? No, nah. So Zach said it's too late to organise anything. Um, so Metcalf, Ferris, Moss and Tanti are the four Australian frontrunners. And if we have Celia and one more, that's six. Six makes a good race. Yeah, Tanti. Hello. Hey, we need to have a medical debrief. I'm waiting on the medical staff arriving. So as soon as they, if you see them, you're gonna hit, tell me, or um, I'm just waiting on the appearing at the medical shed. So, and, and time's ticking on. Okay, thanks. Say bye. Hey! Hey! No speeding in the pits. I oh, know, I got in trouble already. Oh yeah. Oh, what, what, we've got COVID I, I don't know, I've not got, I just don't want it this weekend. Uh, you can give it to me on Tuesday, but not today or tomorrow. Yeah. Uh, thank you, sir. Let's have a little debrief quickly. <laughs> How many have you got here at the moment? Five. Yep, is right. there one more coming? The paramedic coming tomorrow, an extra. Okay. So you've got, all right. Let's just, um, that's four, is your number five. Let's go around here. All right, so what happens is, a bad year, we have 50 injuries. A good year, we have 20 injuries. Um, and the injuries might go from a Panadol because I'm hungover, a, a, a scratch or cut my finger, I've grazed my arm, I've got a bad cork, I've got a broken leg, I've got a broken neck. So, but we run 40 bikes in the track at a time. So every 15 minutes, there'll be a new set of riders out. They'll go from these little kids, four-year-olds, up to 60-year-olds. It's my rules, it's my event, it's how I want it. Just remember all of that. And the, the event runs smooth, it runs good. This is a 15,000 and I'm only interested in the 15,000, not what happens next week or last week or the time before. So our biggest concern is getting you guys to the track, to the incident, without getting injured. It is a dangerous sport. I don't think we've had a medic injured, but I've just got to keep going through this. Made this event possible. Yes, it's been a great year, and um, the sponsors keep coming forward, and rightly so, the biggest event in Australia. I think it's the best event in Australia, and I think um, the riders will agree with that, and hopefully the spectators too, but they've been working the whole venue for over a year, and um, I don't think it's ever been better. Put your hands together. Willie Thompson, the man behind Dirt High Promotion. Thank you so much for coming on up. What do you love so much about this sport, Towns? Uh, well, events like this. It's, um, there's not many left in the world like this. I've, I've travelled for a long time. We're discussing my age a lot tonight. I'm, I'm 37, yeah, I'll confirm that. And uh, I, I've travelled all over the world and there's none, there's not many events left like this anymore, to be honest. You know, it's, uh, it has so much atmosphere and, and everyone is so excited, there's such a buzz. You know, I came here eight years ago and been wanting to come back uh, for a few times now, but it just hasn't worked out and it finally did this year again. And yeah, I just, I truly think it's an iconic event. It, and not just for Australia, but worldwide. It's, uh, it truly is, um, you know, it's a, like I said, it's a proper motocross track and the way that the club uh, prepares the track and, and the way that Willie puts on uh, as, a, as an event promoter. And yeah, so it's, it's really cool. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much. We are looking forward to this weekend's Majima 15,000, proudly brought to you by Berry Sweet. Please put your hands together for Dirt High Promotions, the crew that is involved, and all of our volunteers that are going to make this weekend one of the best weekends in motocross history. Thank you. It is a glorious morning. The fog and the smoke still clinging to the Cozy Creek motocross circuit. What a day we're set for. Some of the country's very best here to get after it for the 15,000. It's an absolutely incredible vibe. 15 second board is up. Gates drop and away we go. This is Manjimup. 
It's tight at the top there. Three wide as they're going to head over. Fox jump and up Rock and Roll Hill proper for the first time. Gives a run. Moss looks good though. Tanky desperately needs to get the job done in this one. And a big move for Metcalf Wade. He made a ton of ground. Rikers gets the head down, closes the distance on the run into the wall of death. Oh boy. Waters in a good position to control the overall outcome here. Currently squared away with outright points lead. This is number 13 event that we've put on. Like last year was pretty big and good and this would equal last year's. So the, the crowd's there, the racing's good, the weather, sensational motocross weather. We missed out on the international guys this year, but we've all set up for next year. And the national guys that came, they've turned it on. Got on a great show. Uh, it's a year's effort, a year's work that we put in here to get this result. And you don't appreciate it until about the middle of the afternoon. And it's, you know, it's, it's on the downward run to the end and you feel like we knocked it off. We killed it. We achieved what we wanted to achieve. This is it. It all comes down to this. Tanti still in with a chance on the CDR Yamaha. Mr. Consistent Todd Waters doesn't have a race win to his name, but will want one to seal the deal. For the last time today, for the All-Stars final of the Manjama 15,000. Take it away, Wade Orger. Very even launch. The All-Stars division serving it up by the bucket load. And Tanti looking to really make a statement here. Really starting to stretch the legs of the team. CDR Yamaha. Waters back in second. Amazing track, an amazing event. Tough times out there in the sand section. It has bitten quite a few riders. Jaden Rikers, he said he wants to come out and take out this last one, but he's got a bit of work ahead of him. Look at the Husqvarna rider, Todd Waters. Takes that high wide line. Aaron Tanti. Putting on a clinic in the final. Not gonna be good enough if they stay like that to wrap up the 15,000. Ladies and gentlemen, you manage them up 15,000. All-Stars overall winner, Todd Waters!